Hello everyone, I greet in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Nathan Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to. And this one says that American Christian says that Muslim are more Christian than Christian themselves. Okay. <laughs> That's a very interesting one. I don't think this should be true for a true practicing um, Christian who follow um, Christ. Suppose in a sense, a Christ is supposed to sin in, a, in his life. And I don't think that a Muslim should be more Christian than Christian themselves if you truly follow the teachings of Jesus Christ and what he has says that we should do. So if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, before we get on to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's opinion thought but then this is basically for educational purposes and i believe that at the end of it we all are going to learn from this so before we even get down to the video this video was recommended to me by mohammed muta sin okay for me to check this out i hope that we all are going to enjoy this um video so without any further ado let's get on to this video and check this out I start off by saying this, Muslims are more Christian than most Christians. Uh, today I want to deviate again, but talk about a message that I think is really important and I feel compelled to um, do this video because it really bothers me. And I want to give my perceptions of the Muslim faith as compared to the Christian faith and how basically it's just about the same thing with one Big difference, and I'll talk about that. You know, if I if I continued living in the United States all these years and I never had the opportunity to live in the Middle East, my perceptions would not be like this. My perceptions would be consistent with what I hear on the news and the media, which is disappointing to hear many times. Yeah, they talk about extremists, but there's extremists everywhere, even in politics. Um, all I can tell you is I have never in my life, never in my life have I been treated with this much respect and kindness and graciousness and generosity and hospitality as the Saudi people have treated me. But let me get to the main point. I want to talk about Christianity and Muslims. I start off by saying this. Muslims are more Christian than most Christians. Muslims are more Christians than, more, than most Christians. Why? Do you know a Muslim cannot be a Muslim if they don't believe in Jesus? In fact, when they utter the name Jesus, they refer to him as Isa, they immediately say right afterwards, may peace be upon him, which is the same thing they do to the prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Jesus is mentioned throughout the entire Quran, and the prophet Muhammad felt closer to Jesus of all the prophets in the Bible, from Abraham to Moses to Noah to all the prophets. Um... They believe in the Immaculate Conception. And there's a whole chapter in the Quran devoted just to Mary, or Miriam, as they refer to her as. And not only about Mary or Miriam, but it talks about her family, where she came from, her parents. I never, I never learned that in all my years going to Catholic school and Catholic education. Um, and they believe that it's Jesus that's going to return. They see Jesus as the, as the Messiah, not the Prophet Muhammad. When they pray, by the way, a lot of, a lot of Americans ask me this question, don't they pray to, to, to Muhammad? No, they don't pray to Muhammad. They pray to God. And here's the most important thing. They believe in one God. And is that what we, isn't that what we were taught? In fact, it's the first commandment of the Ten Commandments from Moses. One God, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt not be a false God before me. That's the first commandment of Moses. As a Catholic, we were taught a prayer that said, uh, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth and all that is seen and unseen. One God. In fact, in the New Testament, in, in the Bible, Jesus said uh, in, in Mark, the first of all the commandments is this. Hear, O Israel. The Lord thy God is one Lord, excuse me for reading, and thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, 
and all thy strength. That's from Jesus. In Matthew, he says, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Again in Matthew, um, it, does, it, it says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, um, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why do you call me good? There is none good but one. And that's God. But if you want to enter in, into eternal life, follow the commandments. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but that's from Matthew chapter 19. And in Mark, in chapter 12, uh, and the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth. For there is one God, and there is none other but he. So even our Bible, the Christian Bible, talks about one God. And I remember learning about Jesus in the Catholic faith, and I remember whenever Jesus was troubled, he prayed to God, prayed to the Father. So that's really what I want to convey we have so much in common. We both believe in one God. Muslims believe that Jesus was a great man, a great messenger, great prophet, probably the most important. It's just that Muhammad came after him. And the question, the sensitive question I would ask many Christians, do you believe Jesus was God? Uh, there's evidence from what I just read, and there's more, I just, read, I just picked a few, that Jesus referred to God the Father. It's about God the Father, not me. So Muslims and Christians believe in one God. Muslims cannot be a Muslim if they don't believe in Jesus. They believe in the Immaculate Conception. And Jesus is written throughout the Quran. And Mary has a whole chapter devoted to her in the Quran. That's my message for today. And uh, let me know what you think. And thank you very much for listening. Hmm. That was a very interesting um, video, watching this American one, of course, um, giving his account about um, Christians. And of course, if we are to talk about um, Muslim, of course, they are very good when it comes to hospitality. But then this very man went on to discuss about um, Jesus Christ, whether he is God or not. But then one thing that I want to call our attention to is uh, the book of uh, John, John chapter um, 10, verse um, 30. If you look at the same from verse 30, what did the Bible say? Jesus says that I and my father are one. And when Jesus in a stand says so, that he and father are one, what did the people do? Of course, they pick up stone. They wanted to, to stone him. Why did they want to stone him? They did not stone him because of the good things or some of the things in a stand he do. But they tried to stone him because of what he says that he is God. And Jesus called their attention and make them understand that it's not written in, a sense, in your books that in a sense, you are God. So why do you want to stone him? So looking at that, in a stand, they are stoning him for blasphemy because he says that in a stand, he is God. Right, and then if it is God, in a sense, so and then the people, in a sense, they pick up the stone to stone. Why do you think, in a sense, they are trying to stone him? And that's why I see, I've always said that, in a sense, there are different accounts, even though Jesus may not admit it, in a sense, directly that he is a God or not. Okay, but then there are so many things, in a sense, that he do that prove to the people that what he is truly, you understand, God. So I expect that, you understand, that we don't have to be dragging about this or that. And then concerning, you understand, the Muslim, of course, we are fully aware that, of course, um, Muhammad, you understand, is not God, but then he was a prophet and then a messenger of God, which God, in a sense, sent his message, in a stand, to the people. But then as for Jesus Christ, there are so many things he do. Should we talk about, in a sense, forgiveness of sin? Of course, we are all fully aware that, in a sense, no prophet, in a sense, in the Bible or even in the Quran that I've ever, in a sense, forgive, in a sense, sin. But it is only Jesus Christ that was able to show us some of these um, things. But anyway, I will just put this, in a sense, on dialogue for us to have a discussion, in a sense, concerning this and then concerning Jesus' um, divinity. I know that there are so many verses, in a sense, both in the Bible and then also in the Quran, in a sense, supporting um, this. This man may be new, in a sense, to Islam, and then him going to Saudi Arabia and then getting to know about um, some of the things, some of the things that has been written about Jesus and then also Miriam or Mary B, you understand, in the Quran. A whole chapter talking about, in a sense, his account, his divinity, and how he was, in a sense, giving birth. Well, that's a new, in a sense, to him, but then to some of us, of course, we are much more familiar, in a sense, 
to some of these things. So I would like to see your thoughts and opinion in us at the comment section concerning this, and then we are going to discuss more in us then at the comment section in us and concerning this, and then also want you to indicate where you are actually um, commenting from, and God is going to bless you as you do so. So this is the end of my video. If you like my reaction, if you like, share, and subscribe, and if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section, and I'm going to check it out. So guys, you remain blessed, and I see you in my next video. Bye-bye.